wave types and parts. Remember that as you're going through the video, when you see the pause video indicator, uh, do that, pause the video, and make sure you take uh, notes of everything that's on the video at that point in time. Waves are a way that energy gets transferred from one location to another. Water waves are mainly transverse waves. Transportation of energy. We use two models to describe how energy is transported, a particle model and a wave model. Previously, we've seen our particle description of motion when we had a, something like a baseball thrown from point A to point B. The baseball's mass uh, and its uh, velocity carried kinetic energy from point A to point B. But now we have a different way to transport energy, energy transported through a wave. A wave transports energy without carrying matter. So the stuff doesn't go from point A to point B. The, uh, the wave carries the energy by propagating a disturbance through a medium. So there's a medium that is disturbed and the wave propagates through the medium without the stuff going from point A to point B. The vibrating arms hit against the surrounding air particles. These particles, in turn, hit against particles of air farther from the tuning fork. When the movement in the air reaches your ear, you hear sound. There are different types of waves and different parts to waves. So let's start off by categorizing uh, what we call a pulse. A pulse is uh, one way a wave is disturbed. If a wave is caused by a single disturbance, we call it a pulse. And that single pulse is propagated through a medium. The energy is carried down the alley by the traveling pulse and knocks down the bowling pin. A pulse propagating down a slinky. A continuous wave uh, is just a series of pulses as we uh, continuously disturb the medium. And so this is a continuous wave, and if we continuously disturb the medium, we create a wave train like this, and that's what a, wa a continuous wave looks like. This is a simple wave movement. Another way we categorize waves or types of waves is through the way we disturb a medium. If we disturb a medium perpendicular to its propagation, as shown in this particular video, the wave was disturbed this way, but the wave propagated down the slinky that way, perpendicularly, then we call that a transverse wave. If, however, we disturb the wave in line with the direction it propagates along the same line, then we call that a longitudinal wave. So when we push and pull in line with it, it's longitudinal. This illustration might uh, help with your notes to show the difference between a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave. Again, with a transverse wave, the disturbance here was perpendicular to the propagation in blue. So the disturbance in the amplitude, which we're going to learn about later, is perpendicular to the propagation direction. With a longitudinal wave, the disturbance right here uh, that created the amplitude of the wave is in line or along with the propagation. So if you put these in your notes, uh, I think that'll help define transverse and longitudinal a little bit better. Some examples of longitudinal waves, one of the more common longitudinal waves is uh, sound. Uh, really, Waves in fluids are typically longitudinal when it's down deep in the fluid or in air like this sound wave is a fluid. So if we have, a, we have something like a speaker cone over here pumping out sound over here, what it's doing is it's pushing this, the air molecules in its proximity here and disturbing it. And that disturbance is in line with the propagation. And again, you can look at any one air molecule here, and it just simply goes back and forth here. And it's by, the, by it going back and forth here, it propagates the wave along to another point in space over here. 
trans an example of a transverse wave is an electro any electromagnetic wave. So if we have electrons running up and down an antenna, then the electromagnetic waves propagate outward from that antenna uh, and perpendicular to that uh, direction of disturbance. So again, the disturbance would be up and down, but the waves would propagate outward away from that antenna. So all electromagnetic waves, including light and radio waves and so forth, are transverse waves. And sound is a longitudinal wave. That's a nice set of facts to uh, note. Surface waves, like uh, ocean waves, or on top of a pool or something, have components of both transverse and longitudinal elements. Since you have a little bit of longitudinal and a little bit of transverse, some going up and down and some going side to side, what you get is a rolling type of emotion. So if you see this particle here, it's going around in a circular path. And so you get the, both components of longitudinal and transverse, and those combine to make a circular type pattern. So surface waves have a little of both. Now there are some location names on waves that we use sometimes. The very top of a wave is called its crest, and then the very bottom of a wave is called its trough. Where the medium would be balanced if there were no disturbance is called equilibrium. So please note these location names. Now we're going to look at some wave parts. The uh, first part of a wave is how much we disturb the wave. And how much we disturb the wave gives the wave more and more energy. And so the part of the wave that gives the wave its size, how we talk about the size of a wave is we talk about amplitude. And amplitude is this amount from the equilibrium point to the maximum displacement up here is called the amplitude and is given the symbol a. Now the wave also has a, a downward part here and so this would also be the same amount of amplitude from the equilibrium to the trough or the bottom part of the wave so that's the negative amplitude. And we can have small amplitudes, medium, large amplitudes, in other words depending on how big the disturbance if I barely tap the surface of water I create a small amplitude. If I do a cannonball into a pool I can create a large amplitude if I barely talk, then the sound is has small amplitude. If I talk really loud, then the sound has a large amplitude. So, what we discover right here is that energy is proportional to the square of the amplitude. So, the larger the amplitude, the more energy the wave carries. The next wave part is wavelength. It's given the Greek letter lambda for uh, a symbol. And wavelengths, like ordinary length, is measured in meters. And a wavelength is the, uh, uh, the distance between consecutive parts of a wave. So if we go from a crest to the crest, those are consecutive uh, crests then that would be the wavelength. Or from trough to trough, that would be consecutive parts, and that would be a wavelength, and these would be the same amount. Or we can go from midpoint to midpoint, and that would be the wavelength. Then all of these, doesn't matter how you measure them, as long as you're going from consecutive part to consecutive part on this continuous wave, you can determine the wavelength. What you see is called a train of waves. The distance between here and here is called one wavelength. So here are some various examples of wavelengths. And their amplitudes are all about the same, but uh, obviously this is a shorter wavelength than this, and this is a shorter wavelength than this. So I uh, might want to note these differences. All electromagnetic waves travel at the same speed, the speed of light. What makes them different is how uh, long their wavelengths are. Wave speed is 300 million meters per second. 
Television waves have a higher frequency, therefore shorter wavelength, than AM radio waves. The frequency is higher for microwaves than television waves. The frequency of infrared waves is higher than microwaves, therefore the wavelength is less. The frequency of visible light waves is higher than infrared waves, therefore the wavelength is less. The next wave part to talk about is frequency, given the lowercase f for a variable, and it's quite simply the number of waves generated each second. And it's measured in a unit called the Hertz, HZ, after a German scientist, Heinrich Hertz. So one, one hertz is one wave per second. So let's take an example here. Let's say that I am generating waves by tapping my, on my computer right here, and I generate four waves in a second. And so by tapping the computer four times like that, I generated sound waves, and I generated about four of them in a second. Therefore, four waves per second would be four hertz. And that's what frequency is. So please take a note of all this. This string is vibrating at a frequency of 55 vibrations per second. This sound has a higher frequency. As I increase the frequency of the waves, that is, make more waves per second, the shorter the wavelength becomes. The next wave part to talk about is related to frequency, and it's called the period. I measure uh, similar again to frequency, uh, but now it is not how frequently we generate the wave. It is the time for a wave to complete one cycle. So the time from uh, uh, center point to center point here. If that time is 0.2 seconds, that would be the period. Again, the time for a wave to complete one cycle. So let's see a relationship between period and frequency. So if we have a uh, frequency here of two hertz, two cycles per second on the top wave, and a frequency down below of one cycle per second, one hertz, we can see that uh, when the frequency decreased, the period increased, the time it took for the wave to repeat increased. In fact, when the frequency got cut in half here, the period doubled. It went from uh, 0.5 seconds to 1 second. So frequency and period are inverses. Frequency is, can, can be calculated by 1 divided by the period, or the period can be calculated by 1 divided by the frequency. So let's take a look at an example of how we could calculate frequency if we were given the period. If we're given the period here of 0 0.02 seconds, the time it takes to repeat the wave from here to here, the frequency would be 1 over the period, or 1 divided by 0 0.02 seconds. So 1 divided by 0 0.02 is 50 hertz. And the inverse is if we were given the frequency of 40 hertz for this particular wave, we could find the period. Period is 1 over the frequency. 1 divided by 40 hertz is 0 0.025 seconds. So that's how long it would take to repeat the wave. You may have noticed on our illustrations on our diagrams that wavelength and period really look the same. But wavelength is the length from one point on a wave to the next consecutive point on a wave, and period is the time that it would take for the wave to go through that wavelength uh, or cycle. There's one other wave uh, part that we haven't talked about here, and that's wave speed, how fast a wave is traveling through a medium. But uh, we don't want to go too fast too soon here. So here's Scratch's parting thought. Good luck.
on your quest for continuous improvement.